What is up you guys? My name is Austin Marks and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I'm currently a respiratory therapist who is pursuing the physician assistant career path. On my channel, I make videos talking about respiratory therapy, uh, talk about the schooling, what it's like being a respiratory therapist, anything about respiratory. And I'm also documenting my journey to become a PA. So if you want to see all of that, make sure you like and subscribe. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about my study techniques, how I study actively rather than passively. So. And this is how I'm studying for the prerequisites to get into PA school. This is how I study throughout respiratory school. And this is how I plan on studying throughout PA school. Now, I may have to switch up a few things here and there because I know PA school is a whole different beast than what I've actually been through already. So, I'm prepared for that. <laughs> so, like I said, there are two different learning styles. So, there's passive learning and there's active learning. So a couple examples of passive learning would be sitting in class, listening to lecture, not typing any notes, not putting anything in your own words. Maybe it's re-listening to lecture over and over again in an audio. Maybe it's just rereading your notes. To me, that is all passive learning. You're just going through the motions. Active learning would include things such as note cards. Maybe you're rewriting your notes, but you're putting everything in your own words. So maybe you're creating graphs, you're uh, going through different mnemonics, just coming up with things in your head to make you remember this information. It's specialized to you. So as I said, um, mnemonics was my, one of my favorite things. So I'm a respiratory therapist. My wife is a physical therapist assistant. And one of the things that she taught me that's a mnemonic that is pretty unique and it stuck with me is the carpal bones. So it's some lovers try new positions that they can't handle. Excuse me if I mess up these words. Anatomy is not my strong suit when it comes to pronouncing different things. Um, same with many medications and different diseases. I suck and it takes me a couple times. So anyway, the carpal bones are scaphoid, the lunate, the trachytrium, the pisiform, the trapezium, the trapezoid, capitate, and hemate. Um, like I said, if I said anything that was wrong, you can go ahead and roast me in the comments, I understand. But mnemonics, mnemonics are very key. So, some lovers try positions they can't handle. So, okay, some, S, lovers, L. So, put different bones with that. There's so many different um, mnemonics for different things. There's a whole website or an app called Mnemonic where they come up with different funny pictures of different things that are occurring in different disease processes. So like, I know one of them was a pneumothorax, which is a collapsed lung, and it was talking about all the different things that could potentially happen, all the side effects, all the symptoms, and it was just a bunch of random things within this picture that help you remember it. So mnemonics are huge, huge, and the more specialized they are to you, you use family members' names, you use funny sayings, whatever, the more likely you're going to remember it. So mnemonics is something that I use throughout respiratory school, as well as my prerequisites that help me remember maybe different bacteria, maybe different signs and symptoms of different things, um, just what to look for. So I'd go through it in my head, and I'm like, oh, okay, let's see, Austin likes pizza. like. Something stupid like that. It doesn't have to be difficult or weird or unique at all. But, I mean, the weirder it is, the more you're going to remember it. Flashcards. So, one app that I absolutely love is the app known as Anki. So, I think it's, I think it costs money for Apple users to buy it. However, if you have an Android, one great thing about Android is, is this app is absolutely free. <laughs> Sorry, all you Apple users. Anyway, um, with this app, what it does is it lets you create virtual note cards, and then it uses something known as spaced repetition. So, in my opinion, those are two of the greatest active learning techniques that you can possibly use. So, I'm going to pull this app, this app up right now. So, I used it for the GRE. So, I'd come up with different words, um, and then it, I'd say show answer after I thought what the answer was, and then it would come up with the definition there, and then at the bottom, I can click what the difficulty was. If I want to see that word again in 21 days, if I want to see it again in 1.9 months. So now I went through these a bunch of times, so it knows that my space repetition is way, way out there, good distance. So what space repetition is, is it basically tells you to look at this word or look at this um, flashcard again right before you're about to forget it. So, for example, um, I looked at a word, 
and I was like, eh, I kind of know that word. I'd say, let me see it again in four days, because I may not use that word again in four days. However, once I see it in those four days, I'm like, eh, I don't know that again, show me again in a day. So then I would keep repeating the process until I actually understood that word, and then I, like I said, the distances between the times I'd see that word again and again would be spaced out farther and farther and farther just to help you remember it in a long-term sense. So Anki is one of the greatest apps. I highly, highly suggest that you use it um, for anything, honestly. It doesn't have to be just respiratory school. If you want to do anatomy and physiology and you're trying to learn all of the bones, it's a great way. Anki. Um, once again, you can also put mnemonics in it. You can put fill in the blanks, it is an amazing app. So what I talked about so far was using mnemonics, using flashcards, using spaced repetition, all for active learning. Once again, one of the greatest things for active learning that I also like is putting in, writing your, rewriting your notes and putting all of it in your own words. You don't need to rewrite all of your notes, obviously. Um, for example, you don't need to know that Francis Scott Key wrote the Star Bangle Banner on September 14th in 1814. That is so irrelevant, so don't even write it down. Don't ask me how I know that. Anyway, just, you want to pick out key information. So once again, going back to the pneumothorax, the collapsed lung. Okay, so I have a collapsed lung. What are different things I can do to help uh, get this better? Can I put in a chest tube? Do I need to decompress it? What are some other things to look for to see if a person has a pneumothorax? You can listen to breath sounds, maybe a chest x-ray. Uh, there's a whole boatload of things, but just write down exactly the key information. Use some of those techniques I talked about, such as mnemonics, flashcards, spaced repetition. Another uh, thing that really helped me was that something called the Pomodoro Technique, I believe. So instead of sitting down looking at your notes for 12 hours straight, take breaks. So set timers on your phones for every 45 minutes and then do something completely irrelevant for 15, 20 minutes and then come back and start studying again. It kind of refreshes your brain, lets you think about something else. Because if you sit there and look at a computer screen or your book for 12 hours, I promise you, you'll have a migraine by the end of the day. Well, anyway, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a thumbs up, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.